what should be, if you were in the SEC shoes, Nancy, maybe, uh, what, what would you, what do you think we should, they should do? <laughs> Get out of the industry. <laughs> Uh, personally, I would put uh, Hester Peirce in charge, and who I think has a much clearer vision of how the area should be regulated. She wants, a, in my view, a softer touch. She believes in regulation, though. I mean, I could give it a list, but it kind of the top six or ten exchanges in the, in the U.S., um, most of them have been knocking on your doors. So they should definitely knock on my door directly. All right, all right. You hear that if you're in the audience here, Circle, Coinbase, Kraken. And, so, and some of these folks have come in to talk to yeah. me, but it's it's helpful to know through the process what's going on. Yeah. So let, let's just touch on asset management and particularly um, exchange traded funds, but there's also a bunch of issues around custody for the traditional pension funds that want to hold or asset managers want to hold. That seems like the area that's been, if I might observe, a, a bit slower at the Securities and Exchange Commission. Um, and it even seems that um, you got part of your branding as Crypto Mom over a dissent you gave earlier this year, that you would have allowed the Winklevoss twins, I think it was, Gemini, to go forward with the exchange traded fund. Do you want to say a few words about that? Sure. A number of, of folks have come in with various exchange-traded products, some of them exchange-traded funds, some other types of exchange-traded products, which are built on or somehow reference Bitcoin or Bitcoin futures or other type of crypto futures, um, Ether. Uh, so the question is, can those list and trade in the United States? They would provide another point of access for people who want to get exposure to these types of assets. Um, and, you know, I think we need to look at how, what our rules allow us, what our statutory framework is and what we're allowed to do and not do. And again, I thought that the SEC um, took a step when they said no to this particular application. I thought we went beyond our statutory authority. Um, I think from my of view, it's quite simple. It's now 2019. We started off with token offerings in uh, 2014, more or less, when after the launch of the Ethereum platform. Uh, we now, when we look what happening in Switzerland and other jurisdictions, moving into an industrial phase where we apply token in industrial use cases where there should be. It's not about an funding element. The funding is the beginning. And here in the US, it seems to me, you're still discussing whether a token, all tokens are securities, which has a, quite an effect on, on the use of these tokens for various applications has effect on custody, it has effect on trading, it has effect on in, uh, many industrial use cases. And I think the fact that we are now sitting here and you asked the question, William, at the very beginning of this panel, is it clear what the SEC says? Well, after uh, roughly five years' time, it's probably the answer is no, it's not clear, otherwise you wouldn't be sitting here. That's the outside view. <laughs> I agree with that. There's some areas that are much less clear, and so that's when someone says, "I have a, I have a project. I want to. We're not up and running yet, but the plan is to have this decentralized system and have tokens operating as the currency of that system, um, and as you know, as the coin of the realm, essentially of that system. And so, and and, and people, network effects matter, right? So the fact that people who who buy those tokens will then use them in the system um, is essential. So at what point, where's the line for those? Are they securities? Are they not securities? That's the much more challenging thing. And maybe something starts out as a securities offering where you're really doing it to raise money, but down the line, it's not a security anymore. It's really a way for you to function in that network. And that's where I think we need to do a better job in providing people some guidance to know how does it change from one thing to another. Um, and we are the, the staff at the SEC is working on some guidance now, but I suspect that we're still going to want to do some higher level. The, the commission is the one that makes decisions, so I'd really like for the commission to come out with some guidance that would do a better job in, in drawing those lines. I missed some of Ted's comments this morning. Uh, you know, we're on a path to fight the SEC really on behalf of the industry. and. 
uh, because the efforts that the SEC has demonstrated thus far uh, in their enforcement actions, uh, the people that they're trying to protect, the token holders, the result of the, enf the enforcement settlements that they've uh, affected uh, caused the tokens to be delisted from the currency exchanges, the foreign currency exchanges, and uh, there's no path for these individuals to actually, you know, sell their token, utilize the token. It's just hurting them. So I, I think... rather than backwards. Uh, the fact that they disagree with how people analyze the Howey test uh, maybe should not be the criteria that they're using at this point. Okay.